Carter headed the organization from 31st January 1998 to 31st March 1998, Sri Ya Patakula.
the delegates who came from other countries, officers of the CBI and other organizations, family members of the CDP police family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Anniversaries are occasions to celebrate, and there is much to celebrate on a 50th anniversary. <coughs> It gives me great pleasure to participate in the Golden Jubilee celebrations of CBI. During its 50th year of existence, CBI has discharged with distinction the Jubilee under the law of the land. Observance of Golden Jubilee is an appropriate occasion for introspection on its objectives and vision on the path it has travels. It also provides an opportunity for re-generating its functioning to meet the future challenges. More so when the public mood is with regard to corruption changing from passive receptivity to active press in quantitative and qualitative terms, the need of the transformation is urgent and clear. CBI is a 50-year young organization that has become an iconic institution in the field of investigation of crime and corruption. Just as the strength of an entity lies in its foundation, the strength of an organization lies in its core values and intrinsic culture. By dint of this exceptional calendar and broad vision, the founder director of CBI, C. Dharmana Prasad Kohli, imbibe the values of industry, impartiality and integrity that enabled the CBI to emerge as one of the premier investigation agency in our country. The foundation is laid an example that is set has been a major factor in what the CBI has achieved for the past 50 years. That could not be <coughs> that could not have been many more befitting to you to the founder, director, than instituting an annual memorial lecture in his name. We are fortunate to have the Honorable President of India today with us to address this August Assembly on good governance, empowering institutions, society and society. Our Honorable President, with his long and illustrious public service of five decades, is an authority on issues of governance. His deep understanding of the challenges our country is facing makes him an eminent authority to deliberate on this topic of great relevance. Today's lecture of a scholar statesman will guide us in addressing the future challenges more resolutely. will go to go in a long way in ensuring probity in public life. Governance denotes the whole gamut of activities right from policy making to the highest level to the delivery of goods and significant services to the citizens. G20 of which India is a member has framed an anti-corruption action plan and set up a working group on the subject. CBI must review, upgrade, and strengthen its capacity for multi jurisdiction investigation. In short, CBI has to prepare to work across the globe in the coming decade. That is more important for our country today because of international crimes are increasing but not only the criminal activities are also on the question of the civil activities. Now, there are 71 codes and special codes have been constituted for the purpose of speedy disposal of cases instituted by CBI. Another 42 codes will be constituted by the government. Now, the, as far as the CBI is concerned, we are very happy that whether it is the state government or the central government, the Supreme Court or the High Court, any other agency, including our own department, they want CBI inquiry on every matter. Therefore, the integrity and also the uprightness of the CBI organization has been applied by the courts and the various state governments and also the various bodies. With this first, I thank the Honorable President for his office present, Honorable Minister Sibrahman Piyata for his office present here. And uh, this on this uh, occasion, I wish all the best for the CBI officer. Thank you very much. It's indeed a privilege for me 
to be present amidst all of you on the occasion of the celebration of Golden Jubilee of the Central Bureau of Investigation. I am especially delighted at the opportunity of delivering the 14th Memorial Lecture of late Aramnath Prashad Puri, a visionary who was the founder of Central Bureau of Investigation. Late Sri Kuli, an illustrious member of the Indian Civil Service, played a definitive role in shaping the character and identity of the organization. He instilled the core value of this organization, three I industry, impartiality, and integrity. These are the three essential ingredients are also of good government. The stature that CBI has gained over the decades is an eloquent testimony to the distinguished services rendered by its founder director and all the directors of CBI who succeeded him and made their own contributions in building up this unique institution. Though there is no exhaustive definition of the term good governance, its underlying important idea is wide. It encompasses vitality and virtually all aspects of human interaction. It is equally relevant at the local and the national level as it is at the international level. Every organization within a society has a decisive role in promoting good governance. These roles may vary depending on the form, structure, and the institutions that each society may have evolved. Good governance is critically dependent on the existence of some fundamental beliefs. At the core is the inviolable adherence to rule of law. From it would emanate critical need for participated decision making structure, transparency, responsiveness, accountability, equity, and inclusiveness. In brief, good governance means the existence of an elaborate architecture that has the good of the people as their only focus. Good governance should create a conducive and enabling environment for the people to pursue their happiness. As I mentioned, the concept is old one. Even one of the hardest treaties of our country, Kotillo's Earth Sastra, Kotillo is giving advice to the king, I quote, the happiness of the people is the happiness of the king. Their good alone is his personal good, is not his true good. The only true good being that of his people. Therefore, let the king be active in working for the prosperity and welfare of his people. And at the root of poor governance is our lethargy to change. Whether it is in the implementation of schemes or adherence to them. I do not have to remind you how grievously harsh the nation was when a young woman, the symbol of an aspiring nation, lost her life in the brutal assault in India in December last year. As I had said earlier, I repeat and I do believe it is time for us to reset our moral compass. 
the police and investigation organizations can play a crucial role in creating conditions that could endanger, endanger uh, social changes. <coughs> An alert police force and investigative agency can ensure that no crime goes unpunished. It is important to ensure speedy and thorough investigation of allegations. Prosecution should also be speedy so that the guilty are punished without delay. This would enhance the deterrent value of punishment. It would improve responsiveness, one of the most important features of good governance. To conclude, let, let me reiterate that good governance should be our own way of heading forward. It holds the key to sustainable development, inclusiveness, and economic progress. Let us therefore rededicate ourselves to the achievement of this noble objective. I congratulate all those whose services have been recognized by providing them as mark of recognition medals. I am confident it will, they will continue to serve this nation with devotion professionalism and foresight. I also wish the CDI every success in their future endeavors. I congratulate once again all the past and present officers and staff of CDI whose untiring efforts and single-minded devotion have made it not only the premier investigating agency in the country, but perhaps the most sought after agency for investigation by every section of the society. <laughs> that is of the credibility of this organization. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.